Hello, and welcome to Let's Make a Top-Down Shooter. This video is about setting up the top-down camera, because otherwise, it wouldn't be a top-down shooter. Now, since the C++ look code down here has the character changed in direction with the uh, mouse X value, and the move code has the character moving based on the direction, uh, we need to only change uh, the look. And we're going to do that by removing it. I'm going to remove the function, which is set up here. And so since the way we're going to be setting the uh, rotation of the character is through the mouse, in begin play, where we have the player control being used, I'm just going to call player controller set show mouse cursor set that to true and player controller set input mode and we want that to f input mode game and ui So this will show the mouse cursor and then allow it to be used for the game as well as the user interface. I'm going to compile that. Run the editor. So if we were to run that, all you would see is that the mouse is no longer doing anything, and you have a mouse cursor. It's still third-person mode. To switch that, we go into the third-person character. We want the camera boom. We want to uncheck pawn control rotation. And set the rotation to world, which is absolute. And set the Y rotation to negative 90. So now you can see that the camera is facing down. Obviously, it's a little too close. Moving the mouse does nothing. And WASD, or controller joystick, is moving. So we'll set the arm length to 1500. And as you can see, the character is moving in the direction of movement. To disable that, you can uncheck Orient Rotation to Movement. I'm also going to check Use Controller Desired Rotation. And then to use the mouse to figure out how we should rotate, we're going to get the player controller. We're going to call get hit result under cursor by channel. We're going to use the visibility channel. As long as this returns true and it hits something, Can get the player controller again. We're going to call set control rotation. For that, we need the hit result, which we will break. We want the location of where it hit. However, I'm going to right click and hit split because we don't need the Z location. I use a utility function called find look at rotation. 
I'm going to split both of these for the same reason. Return value here will be the new rotation. The start is the get actor location. X and Y values. And the target is the hit result. You can just close this up so it doesn't waste so much room. So now you can see that the character is following the cursor. And if I have use, in this case, A and D to move, or to strafe, it's strafing according to where the cursor is. So if I just hold down D, for example, and move that all around, then it goes in a big circle. Some people like that. I do not. And it, uh, it works for some games. Um, ideally, you would uh, let the player choose. So using set control rotation along with the uh, use controller desired rotation, the move is based on the direction that it's facing, and it will strafe according to the mouse. However, if you wanted an eight direction movement that doesn't strafe based on the location of the, the mouse, like I do, uh, you can change the get player controller with set control rotation to set actor look. Set actor rotation. So now when I have the mouse up over here in a diagonal, I'm hitting A and D, and it's using compass directions. So I have the usual eight direction movement. Now, as a developer or designer for your project, you know what's best and can pick whichever method you prefer, right? Not really. Especially when it comes to control or anything accessibility related, offering options to your players is better, assuming it's not breaking an aspect or restriction of the intended design. So get hit results under cursor here. What this is, is the engine is doing a ray trace from the camera through the mouse. This means that it needs something to hit. If your entire screen will be encompassed by level geometry, you can leave this as is. But in the case where you have no geometry beyond the walls, like in this default level, you can see that if the mouse is over top that, over here, it's turning. Once I move it out here, nothing. So for that, we can just add a plane to the entire level. Just set this plane to zero, zero, zero. Make it very large. Apparently very ugly, but you can see that it fixes the issue. So now when the mouse is out there, it's all good. However, you don't want a big white plane uh, looking like that. So the plane itself, we can set to not visible. And you can see that it still works. One thing that's important to note is that this is no longer visible, so you might wonder why this still works. Well, rendering visibility is different than collision. Down here we have the collision. And for this plane, the collision presets are set to default. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it to no collision. 
so that it doesn't collide with anything. It's not true. We're going to set it to custom. Turn everything to ignore except the visibility channel we can enable. And the collision enabled here should be set to query. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video and you would like to see more, you know what to do. And if you'd like to support this channel or just want to download the project files, you can do so through the Patreon link below.